Hello and welcome back to 5 Minute Materials, the show where we demystify every node in the Unreal Engine Material Graph. Today, we are looking at the Dither AA node. This is one of my favorite, most handiest nodes that I've ever used before, especially using a cell shader, like a global cell shader, where translucent, transparent, additive materials don't really play nicely a lot of the time. Let's jump in. Now, as you can see, I have a translucent material. So if we were to look down in this bottom left corner uh, and select translucent, and then we're going to plug this gradient in to the opacity, you'll see that, okay, we have a gradient, but if we look at our shader complexity, you can see that although this is a very extremely simple material, it is rendering everything twice. Translucent materials aren't as performant as opaque materials, obviously. So what we can do to combat this is instead of using translucency, we can select our blend mode and go masked, which I'm sure you've used before. And we can go dither temporal AA. So if we now have a look back, you can see we get basically the same thing, right? But if you were to look really closely, and this will be really hard to see on YouTube because of compression, instead of being transparent, it uses a dithering pattern to sort of poke lots and lots of little pixel-sized holes in the material so that you can see through to the other side. And it does it from no holes being poked in it, and then a few holes, and then, you know, a few more holes until eventually there are no pixels left and it does this in screen space so the little dots are the same size no matter if you're out here looking at it or if you're right up close so now if we were to go to our optimization view mode and check out the shader complexity it is in the bright green it's very very green one sort of artifact of this uh, well, one, your shadows will be going crazy, but using the shadow pass switch node, which I have a tutorial for right here, you can bypass that. But more importantly, if you're using temporal anti-aliasing, where it takes an average of the aliasing between frames and yada, 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 you will get some ghosting behind the translucent object. Now, a lot of the time it isn't very noticeable, and I actually use this to my advantage sometimes. So for example, my falling sand shader takes advantage of that to make it sort of seem grainier and mistier like sand is. And I also use it in my waterfall sections of my, my river material. Uh, I also use it in all of my particles to create that sort of blurry mistiness. And I'm using it here a ton as well to create actual mist. And that's where that ghosting effect can actually look kind of quite nice. Another thing to mention about this is you can set it to use a random noise pattern or a sort of static, more grid noise pattern. This is kind of, it just comes down to personal taste. Each one can be used for different things. For example, my occlusion system uses the non-random dither noise because I want it to be as least intrusive as possible. Whereas things like this foamy water and these particle effects and that kind of thing, I want them to look sort of grainy and, and noisy. So I use the random pattern for that. One thing I forgot to mention is you can stack these as much as you like and it will still sort of obey the, the translucency, you know, settings that you've put into it. Because it's a screen space dithering, you don't actually get any sort of overlapping like you do with translucent material. So if I was to go back into the shader complexity mode, you can see that these are all still bright, bright green. So that's been the dither temporal AA node. Once again, what it does is creates a dithering pattern to sort of fake translucency on a masked material. So the material is still opaque, but you end up being able to sort of see through it via literally pixel-sized holes in a certain pattern, kind of like comic book shading. It can introduce some ghosting behind the object that you're looking at, but it is multitudes cheaper than using translucent materials. If you found this educational or entertaining, uh, chuck us a like and a subscribe. It really helps to get all this info out there. If you really, really enjoy what we do here on the channel, consider checking out our Patreon in the description below. And with that, I say goodbye. Goodbye.